I'm Jane, this is Johnny, and welcome once again to Start Select, 100% of your recommended weekly allowance of video game video show. It's nutritious and delicious, much like the tasty weapons of Red Faction Armageddon and the downloadable puzzle platformer Outland, which looks good enough to eat. Get ready to chow down on both of those in this week's show, but only by way of appetizer for your main course. We talked to the producer of Red Faction Armageddon, the lovely Jim Boone, about what to expect from this return to the Red Planet. And for dessert, another prize for the Start Select prize pile and your sweet sweet feedback. Were you hungry when you wrote this? So hungry. With Red Faction Armageddon fast approaching, it's time to tackle an age-old question. Real guns or virtual guns? Which is better? Jane here went all the way to Ireland to find out. Isn't that right? Mm. Mm -hmm. So we took a trip to the Emerald Isle to spend some time on the Red Planet as yet another shaven-headed Mason. Darius Mason this time, grandson of Alec, baldy hero of 2009's Red Faction Gorilla. At the Dublin event, Red Faction publisher THQ had generously laid on a selection of actual firearms for us to look at but not touch between bouts of Red Faction Armageddon. While they were looking the other way though, we were all over them shiny guns. We had Jim Boone, the game's producer, help us compare and contrast the exotic super weapons of Red Faction Armageddon with the people perforating guns of boring real life. <laughs> So uh, first of all, tell us about Signature Weapon, tell us about the Magnet Gun. So the Magnet Gun is definitely our signature weapon. It's, it's a gun where it's very simple to use, where you fire a main projectile out, you can fire at any destructible object or any, any enemy in the game, and then you fire a second projectile out, and whatever the, the first projectile is attached to will come colliding with the second one. So you can do a lot of creative things like taking giant chunks of concrete off a building and slamming it into an enemy, or taking two enemies and slamming them into each other. Um, creating all kinds of, uh, of mayhem, so it's a, it's a very creative weapon to use and we've seen people use it in a lot of fun ways. Uh, whereas in the real world we have a Beretta 9mm and it fires bullets. And then next up we've got the Nano Forge, right? Yes, yeah, so the Nano Forge has a, a few different uh, abilities, so the main one that people tend to use is called Impact, and what that is is it's a medium range burst of nanites that does, it does a, a major amount of destruction right in front of the player. So if they want to do so, if they have something that they quickly want to blast through, maybe there's a wall that's separating them from their goal, you can just tap the button and it immediately just destroys through the wall and you can run right through it and go on to your objective. Uh, slightly bigger and more exotic, we've got the M4A1 and it also uh, fires bullets, is that right? No, it fires uh, little pellets. Okay, and then your third favorite weapon? For mine, it, it would be the uh, the the, play, the phase plasma beam. Um, the plasma beam will actually, it's you can think of it as almost a giant lightsaber. It's my favorite way of describing it, where it's this huge burst of energy that will slice through anything that, that's destructible. So you can have a gigantic building and just slice it from the base of the building, and then the whole building will come crumbling down. And then all the way at the other end of the spectrum, we have the M60 here, which, uh, tell us about the M60. It fires bullets, I guess. Uh, same as the other one there. It's uh, plastic babies, except this one is 900 per minute. So don't get in the way of it. All right. Did you know that every minute, zillions of great console games go neglected and unnoticed just because they don't come on shiny discs? That's right, for only a few pounds a month or a few hundred Microsoft points, you could give a home to downloadable games that aren't favoured with the luxury of big, flashy AAA marketing campaigns. Such as Outland. Long-suffering but unmurdered intern Igor gives you the lowdown on this neat puzzle platformer. In every calendar cycle, the gods of chaos and balance fight to escape, threatening total destruction. In each era, a hero has risen. Long ago, that hero was me. Let's take a step back from heavy-hitting AAAs for a minute to spend some time with the downloadable scene, home to many a low-profile treat and many cool side-scrolling, platform-hopping adventures. Outland, which is just out this week on the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live Arcade, is the latest of these. It's a platformer set in an ethereal netherworld into which we jumped, infused with the power of mighty Aztec gods for your amusement. 
battles between light and dark are nothing new, but Outland's mix of platforming, unique art style and Ikaruga-like gameplay mechanics will have you hooked from the start. In it, elements of top-down shooters and traditional two-dimensional platform gameplay intertwine to form an engaging and clever puzzle platformer. Beautiful artistic design creates powerful visual contrasts between the levels and its protagonist. The shadowy figure of our hero stands out in a world full of rich colour, the glowing gold emphasising the gods, while the darkness constantly looms as you explore vast jungles, caves and ancient cities. Progressing deeper into Outland, you can switch between a blue form and a red form by tapping the right bumper or R1. Enemies appear in blue or red, and you can only do damage if you attack while in the opposite colour form. Similarly, projectiles in the environment pass through you if your colours match. Puzzles take full advantage of this mechanic, and a satisfying difficulty curve makes each new puzzle harder, but rarely leads to frustration. Outland is home to many enemies that appear in different shapes and sizes. Insects, guardian soldiers, and giant bosses, which all help to keep combat diverse and entertaining. Venturing further, you find upgrades and special moves. Our particular favourite is the Light Beam, reminiscent of a Kamehameha from Dragon Ball Z. Combat feels smooth as our hero swings a sword to vanquish enemies, and the colour mechanic keeps you on your toes when attacking two-tone groups of enemies. He found the seer, collapsed at his fireside. An interesting story unites these gameplay elements. Your journey is marked by dialogue whenever you acquire a new ability or defeat a boss. Outland is a great blend of platforming and puzzles, with a unique look and a well-implemented colour-changing mechanic framed by a mystical story. Although the map can be difficult to understand, and backtracking can be an issue until you acquire the teleportation ability, the engaging, entertaining and constantly challenging experience will keep you from putting the pad down. Outland is out now on PlayStation Network and Xbox Live Arcade for $7.99 or 800 Microsoft points respectively. Together we shall restore the balance to this ancient place before chaos conquers all. So you've seen the weapons, now meet the game, Red Faction Armageddon. After the game's producer indulged our gun obsession, for which, see the top of the show, we let him talk about, like, the parts of the game that aren't guns. Whatever. You hear that? Uh, this is Jane Douglas for GameSpot UK. We're here with Jim Boone, lead producer on uh, Red Faction Armageddon. Hi, Jim. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's good to be here. OK, we've seen the game a few times, um, but for someone who's not familiar with it, can you just uh, give us a quick breakdown? Tell us uh, what's the game about, when's it set? Definitely. It's, uh, it is a, it's our, one of our prime things is destruction in this game. It's a hallmark of our series. And this game actually takes place a couple generations after the previous game, Red Faction Guerrilla. And you play the grandson of the main hero from that game, Alec Mason. Your character's name is Darius Mason, and he starts off as a member of the Red Faction. And um, But we tried to go in a very different direction than the, most of the previous Red Faction titles in the sense that what happens from, with uh, poor Darius is that he has some very non-human sorts of enemies. We kind of introduced that sort of thing in some of the previous games, but in this one we really wanted to go crazy with having some, some very different sorts of creatures that you fight. And so these, these creatures actually get unleashed on, on Mars and just wreak havoc through the whole world. We, we call it Armageddon for a reason, is how we always talk about it. And Darius has to try to find a way to, to, to save the day. I mean, he is definitely the central hero in this, in this journey and trying to find out, is there any way to stop all these aliens and save the, the survivors that are on Mars? Okay, cool. As we understand it, they come from the deeps that they're sort of, it's an underground set game, basically. Exactly right. There's a, there's about 20% of it or so that is still on the surface, but the majority of it is underground. It's given us a chance to do a lot of different things in terms of different locales that you can go through. There's a lot of variety in the, in the aesthetics of the, of the world, but it's also just a lot of fun to go in these gigantic caverns. And we, we always like to, to point out that sometimes you, you might think of them as being smaller caves, and we like to do some claustrophobic settings like that, but it's these really huge caverns that you go into with tons tons of destruction throughout them that you have to journey through as you're trying to find out what is the source of these aliens that you unleashed and underneath the ground and why is it that they're, they're running rampant and taking over everything. Okay, so you've still got some big underground spaces, but it is a more linear game, is that right? That is correct, yeah. That was something we talked about quite a bit, actually, early on, because Red Faction Guerrilla is, it was an open world game, and it was something we were really pleased with and we thought worked really well. And early on when we were talking about Red Faction Armageddon and what we would do with it, we, we talked to a lot of people that were fans of the Red Faction Guerrilla game and tried to find out what was it in particular that they really liked about the game. And the things we kept hearing were things like destruction, they love destruction, they love the combat, the enemies, um, the different weapons that you have. 
But we also heard a lot of comments about how it would start to get a little bit tedious when you had to go from one area, you've had a lot of fun in it, now you have to get in your vehicle and drive through a somewhat featureless area for a few minutes to get to the next area to have the, the fun again with destruction and everything. And so our thought was if we can take all of that and just kind of squeeze it and condense it together in a more linear setting, it was more, it, it gave the fans more of what they really wanted with destruction and the weapons and, and, the, and the combat. Hey, uh, this old arc welder still work? Can we talk about the vehicles um, to, to, to begin with? I know the, the yeah. weapons are a big deal, but since you touched on vehicles, sure. uh, can you tell us what we have to look forward to? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different vehicles. Uh, I always joke around saying that one of the things we tried to do in this was to do some very different vehicles that you or I would never be able to drive. They're not wheeled vehicles. You'll have things from all the way from a, a exoskeleton called the Red Faction Leo that's about twice the size of a person that you, you, can, you can do massive destruction in it. You can walk through walls. You can do all kinds of fun things with it. All the way to this, to flying vehicles, we actually have a, a vehicle that's very reminiscent of a Descent. It's called the Inferno GX, so you'll be able to fly around. The Marauders have some very exotic vehicles. They have the, they have a vehicle that is a six-legged walker that actually is this gigantic walker that will walk through buildings. It has tons of really heavy weaponry on it. Um, so there's a pretty good variety. Those are just a few of the, the vehicles that we have in the game. Okay, um, can we go on to uh, multiplayer perhaps? Absolutely. Tell us what we're, we're looking forward to in multiplayer. Yeah, so, it, so multiplayer in this one is it is a cooperative mode called Infestation, and it's anywhere from one to four players that you play it. We have uh, eight different maps. Um, the maps also have a dark mode that you can unlock, that you can play through, and the, each one also has 30 waves of progression through it. So you and your friends can go through and play a cooperative mode where you go through and, and you have uh, two different types of, of matches. You have, a, you have a survival match where you just have to you have to survive the onslaught of the aliens that come after you, and then there's another one which is defend, which is which is particularly fun with our game because there's a particular structure that you have to defend. You have to use your repair ability, which is one of the nanoforge, the prime abilities of it. You have to repair the building and all, as all these aliens attack it. And they have some very devastating weapons. It's something that was fun for us to give the aliens destructive weapons rather than just the humans always being the ones doing it. And so you really have to work hard and work as a team to try to keep those structures intact. And uh, it was something we also talked a lot about because we've, we've been fans of competitive multiplayer for a long time. And, and there was a conscious choice on our part to go more towards this cooperative side because we really tried to put a lot into this and a lot of depth. Um, there's a lot of upgrades and the upgrades are actually shared between single player and multiplayer. So there's, a, there's, a, there's an awful lot of depth that you, can, that you can have in going through all of this. So, it was, uh, we've had a lot of fun putting this, uh, this together. Okay, so that repair-based multiplayer mode, that's kind of in contrast to what you had in Guerrilla where it's all destruction-based. Yes, well, there exactly. Is destruction. That's exactly right. Well, one of the things we've found is that it, for, forever, as long as we've been doing this game, people just love to destroy things. It's just, it's just something naturally fun about it. And then how we weave it into the gameplay is where, where it really starts to shine. But if you put a controller in someone's hand and just have them destroy things, it's just inherently fun. And what we found is with, with, with repair, it's almost exactly the same thing, where there's just something satisfying about just repairing an entire structure. And you can repair an entire structure from, from the foundation up, every bit of it. It's, it's completely dynamic. And so our thought was, this is fantastic. It's, you know, it's, again, it's something that very much leverages our technology, which is, is pretty unique to Red Faction. But it also takes us in a slightly different angle, because it's our fourth game now in the Red Faction series. And so our thought was, what kinds of things can we do to keep it fresh? And so this was something we thought was pretty exciting in the sense that you have a mode that's just dedicated towards repair. All right, neat. Thanks very much for talking to us, Jim. Um, can you tell us what platforms and uh, when's it out? Absolutely. It is 360 on um, PlayStation 3 and PC, and it's out in June 3rd. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Thank you. With Red Faction Armageddon not out till the beginning of June, though there is a demo out on May 3rd, you've got some time to kill, right? So how about some new releases? Fresh on store shells, both real and virtual, we've got. Sci-fi action RPG Dark Sport out today. It's an online PC title offering solo, co-op, and player versus player fun times with aliens on the planet Cryos. Our movie tie-in game Thor God of Thunder is available on your platform of choice from tomorrow. It's hammer time, etc. Virtua Tennis 4, meanwhile, smashes its way onto PS3, X360 and Wii tomorrow, boasting Kinect and Move support, as well as 3D on the PlayStation 3. Back of the net. Wrong sport. Anyway, Outland, which you'll by now be familiar with, will be newly available by the time this show goes live. I mean newly available on PSN. If they've mopped up all the milkshake, they spilled down the back of the mega server. The service is still down at the time of recording, and also on XBLA. 
We know you're out there. We've read your YouTube comments. Still very upset, by the way. But if you want to address us directly and you're feeling civil, there's always Facebook, Twitter and the Start Select homepage. Since the last show, we've had word from The Jackal, who says, loving the new non-family friendly direction. And can only be referring to the gruesome Mortal Kombat fatalities in the last episode. Um, thanks, we guess. It's not that we hate families, really. We just like Mortal Kombat. GameSpot commenter Punisher also likes Mortal Kombat. Loving Mortal Kombat so much that I pee myself a little bit every time I do a fatality. Best MK ever. I wear diapers now. So, that's good. Sheikh Mohammed asks, did I just see Guy Cocker playing PlayStation 3? Uh, if you were watching last week's show, then yes. If you were watching Guy through his window, also yes. And he says to please stop. Well, Anthony CG wants to know, has anyone ever used the select button to select something? Anyone? Over on Facebook, Chris Van Overdyke says, perhaps the addition of outtakes would make the show even more rad. Mm, maybe. Can do that? Yeah. yeah, all right, we can, yeah, we'll try. 100% of your recommended weekly allowance of video game video shows. It's nutritious and delicious, much like the tasty weapons of Red Faction Armageddon and the downloadable puzzle platformer Outland, which looks good enough to eat. <laughs> Think the mic's in shot, Sam? <laughs> Think the mic in shot. <laughs> From the top. From the top. All right. Much like the tasty weapons of Red Faction Armageddon and the downloadable puzzle oh platformer. It's nutritious and delicious, much like the tasty weapons of Red Faction oh, Armageddon. Oh, you. <laughs> I just snorted a microphone. <laughs> uh, there's got to be something workable in yeah, there. Yeah, there's something in there. One of those will be All fine. Right. And Philip Priestley, first time viewer and commenter, says, first time watching Start Select, very informative. Massive guy cocker lols at guy's game face. Oh, you mean... Finally, it's time to pop another prize on the Star Select prize pile. This week, a copy of Deus Ex Icarus Effect, a novel set in the universe of upcoming cyberpunk RPG, Deus Ex Human Revolution, uh, like what we had on the show a couple of weeks back. You guys like books, right? That's in addition to Michael Jackson, The Experience on PS3 or Xbox 360, a £50 voucher for some game-inspired togs from Insert Coin Clothing, as modelled here, and a yet-to-be-decided final amazing prize in the next episode. Stay tuned for that and for how to win the lot. Also, you can win one of 50 pairs of three-day tickets for the glorious Cosplaytastic London MCM Expo coming up on May 27th. We'll be there and there'll be games, it'll be good times. For that, go to tinyurl.com slash omgmcm. And then finally, finally, I'll be hosting a Q&A session with Duke Nukem Forever producer Randy Pitchford at BAFTA's London headquarters on May the 11th. You can pick up a ticket via tinyurl.com slash 14 long years. And that's it for another show. Drop us a line at gamespot.com slash startselectfacebook.com slash gamespotuk or tweet us at gamespotuk. Good night and good luck.